Last week, we, uh, we went on the easy way. The easy way to fertilize your heart. And the easy way and the God-ordained way was to fertilize your heart through God's Word. And we went over Scripture, over Scripture, over Scripture, over Scripture about fertilizing your heart God's way, with God's Word. Amen? Amen. So let's get into new ground today. Let's talk about the hard way. The easy way and the God-ordained way is through His Word. So let's talk about the hard Word today. Kind of looking around because we're, did you, anybody know where Pastor Kimberly is? Goldfish, okay, because she's, she's the one that keeps my time going now. If y'all wondering why I don't go over an hour and stuff now, it's because she's got my time thing going on. I don't see it, so if we get out at 1230, you can tell Miss Kimberly. Okay, make it. All right. Well, Father, I need to pray. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. Father, thank you for giving us your spirit in here today. Thank you for moving, Lord, because that's what you want. You don't want just a bunch, gathering of a bunch of people just because. You want lives changed. And I've said it from the beginning. I would much rather have lives, lives changed than butts and seats. And Father, I thank you that you are doing a work and we give you glory for it, Lord. Thank you for moving among us. It's because we love our family. And we love people. And we love to see that when you connect with a hurt and broke, battered, torn, or sick life, Lord, and can restore it whole. Because you, you don't, it's not just you went through a resurrection. You said, I am the resurrection. I am resurrection. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you for being all that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So. Here we are, the hard forms of fertilizing. The hard forms of fertilizing your heart, doing it your own way. We went over the easy way last week, God's Word. The hard forms of fertilizing. They are, number one, is manure. Dung, waste, whatever you want to talk whatever you want to call it. And number two is decay. Decomposition or rotting. Now we all know what manure is, right? Yeah. Amen. Okay, I won't have to go and explain that. And it's amazing how God's creations can get rid of unneeded waste which in turn becomes fuel for other living organisms to thrive. It's amazing that God doesn't even waste waste. He will waste nothing. Amen. We're going to talk about some of that today. Get excited about it. See, he will use failure as a formality to fruition. In other words, he'll take that place in your life when you got dumped on, amen, and he will use that to fertilize, to bring fruit from it. Amen. amen. Y'all with me? Now, let's get this straight before I go on any further in this. You've got you to understand this, because if you miss this, then you're going to think some of the stuff I'm saying is unbalanced. Listen, God will use, if you're writing notes, underline that. God will use, not send. God will use, but not send those times in your life when you've missed it big time, <laughs> due to horrendous choices and decisions which resulted 
and being dumped on. <laughs> Say that again. He will use it. He will not send it. Why? Because we already went over last week how he operates. What does, what's, his, what's the God-ordained way? His Word. But if you won't go through His Word, learn from other people, because that's what it is. We went over that last week. I can't reteach it. But it's example after example after, for us. For us. So we won't have to go through the same thing. A double man. So God will use those things, but He will not send them. You might say, but pastor... They did it. They did it to me. Well, maybe so, but did you get a check in your spirit about it before it went down? They did it to me. They did it to me. Did, did you get a check about it? In any way? Did you, listen, did you even check in with God before you even went one foot in that direction? Halfway into the race is not the time to be calling on the name of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, they might have did it to you, but did you get it a check in your spirit? Did you even check in with God before you started moving in that direction? Or did you, listen, did you fast and pray about it until you heard from heaven? See, God is not going to bless your mess, but He will if you hold out your hand in repentance and turn and ask for mercy. He will deliver you out of your mess. Amen. But He won't bless your mess. God's not going to come into the middle of your mess and put His blessing on it. I don't know if you heard me or not. Let me say it one more time. God is not going to come in to your mess and bless. It will continue. It was dysfunctional from the get-go. Get it did not line up with His Word. He did not give you the green light. Therefore, listen, He's not obligated. He doesn't work according to your, to your needs. He works according to His Word. And so He's not going to come in just to bless the mess. He'll deliver you from that mess. But a lot of times we want to hold on to the mess. Well, that's the whole reason I started this to begin with. I like it. Yeah, hold on to it. Keep holding on to it. You're holding on. Listen, you're holding on. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're holding on to radiation. It's slowly going to kill you. And you don't even see it. He'll save you from it. But He's not going to bless that mess. Amen. Let me give you some examples from my own life. I forgot to talk to Miss Pastor Kimberly about some of these, so... Okay, that's all I need to know. <laughs> There's been times in our life, remember, we're talking about doing things your way, not heeding God's word and doing it His way. How He, he, he won't bless the mess, but He'll deliver you from it. Amen? Amen? And He will use it. That's not how He wants to teach you lessons. But He'll use that as a learning opportunity. And I'm going to give you some examples in my life, and then we're going to get down into some Scripture. I can remember when we moved down here and we had the essence of oil and we had shake, rattle, and roll. What in the world are you talking about? Well, our silver Subaru was the essence of oil because every time I would stop at a stoplight, the, the, it would, smoke would come out of the engine. It was leaking oil in some places, and so it would just come up. And I <laughs> Look, it's not your earnest pleading with God that does anything. It's your faith in what He's already done. But even in that particular time, I can remember so clearly it was one summer, you know it's hot, 95 degrees, I'm going on into work, and I've got the windows rolled up, the AC on, and I'm stopped at the at Hillcrest and Cottage Hill intersection. There's a lot of traffic there, and I'm just talking smoke's going everywhere. you got people rolling up their windows because smoke's coming into the car. I just do this number kind of sink, sinking. I'm a tall guy, so that's hard to do. I started sinking real low, and I just looked at God, and I said, Lord, I said, our whole life is going in the direction that you want. We're yours, Lord. 
this don't look good on you, Lord. It don't look good at all. I did. I said that. I said, this don't look good on you at all, Lord. This is not a good example of the kingdom. And then we had shake, rattle, and roll because it had a lot of different, we'll just say moving parts that shouldn't be moving. And so you'd hear things. And they lasted a long time. Both of them had, uh, at, if not a little over 200,000 miles. And they decided that within a two week, within one month, within one month, both of them went kapunk. Now, if you just do one car, you might be able to uh, crunch the numbers, you know, just do what you can. But when you have two cars, and now you're looking at two car payments. And once again, we've de dedicated our whole lives to ministry. So it's not like, you know, we're both working, you know, 40 plus hours and overtime and stuff a week. So on the budget that we had, let me just say that ain't good. And so when we were praying about it, the Lord led us to a car lot to get... Uh, the Nissan Altima that we got. It was not crazy mileage. It wasn't low, low miles, but it wasn't crazy mileage. It was very clean. It was nice. We had a piece about it. So we went ahead and we got that one. And we, we set it up. And then, what was we see, about a month later? And about a month later, we were all right with that. When we first made that first payment on the one, all of a sudden the other one broke down. Now, on the first one, we prayed. And we asked God where we should go, what we should do, what's the, you know, payment. We didn't go to Mr. Calculator first. We went to God. What's, you know, what we should do. When he gives you the word, then you can go to the calculator. Amen. God does not speak through your calculator. <laughs> well, I just crunched the numbers. That couldn't be God. Yeah. I said, oh, well, I'm going to get off track if I go on to that. You ask God first, what should we be looking for? If God says a number above what you think you can do, do it anyways. If he told you, it'll work out. <laughs> Jesus looks at you and, 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 and out from the boat and says, come, I guess you could walk on water, couldn't you? Huh? But if you don't hear the word come, you're going to sink. <laughs> Better get that word. And so we prayed about this, that, and the other. The God led us to that car. Well, the other one, I didn't spend this, so much time in prayer. And we were down to one vehicle. And between what we had to do in our daily lives, we could not function that way. You can only get a ride so often for so many people. We had to get something now. So you know what I did? I did exactly what I'm telling you not to do. Learn from my example. We went out and we got to a car lot, went to a different place. I kind of looked through some stuff. I said, well, that's not that bad of a price. Did you hear what I just said? That's not that bad of a price. That's not new, but it's not old. It's kind of clean. Okay. Well, let's just get that one. Never did check in with heaven. Never did pray about it. Let me get to the end of the story before I continue on this story. That Altima lasted for many, 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 many years. And until it was about ready to go, it did pretty good. And it didn't have to do something every now and then. But with this other one, we got it. And let me just say that to you too. If you want it so bad, then it's yours. Have at it. If you want it that much, the Lord will say, all right. It's yours. Go ahead. You wanted it. You got it. Are you listening to me? And so everything was fine at first, just like it always is. Oh, this ain't no problem. You know, when Adam ate the fruit, he didn't immediately kill over and croak. It's not like he bit into a cyanide apple or something. Everything looked like it was just the same in certain aspects. Amen. And so it wasn't too long after we got the vehicle that we didn't pray about, we didn't ask God about, that all of a sudden 
And for any of y'all who's a mechanic or ever had any car problems, you know that this is the worst thing you could hear. All of a sudden, our car would not go, and they said, you need a new transmission. That was like, not quite, but almost a fourth of the price of the car. What do you do when that happens? i tell you what you do. You get on your knees and you say, Lord, you're not going to bless this mess, but I need to get out of this mess. I didn't check with you on this one. Lord, I repent. Did you hear what I said? I went to the source first and said, I missed you because I didn't check in with you. And God said he'll always make a way of escape. But listen, it might not be the way you want it to be, but he'll always make it. He didn't make you, he didn't force your hand to make that choice. And he's not going to force your hand on the way of escape that he's made either. So what happened was my happy little hiney worked, 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 and worked, and worked, and worked. Lord, how mercy. I didn't get to see Kimberly at all that, that much that year. I mean, really. I mean, I was Monday through Friday and Saturdays. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you know what happened? With all that overtime and everything, we paid it off. We at least got one paid off that year. A year. Because I wouldn't spend a few days in the presence of God. I had to labor. I had to take a whole year of my life to get out of that mess. But he helped us get out of that mess. Amen. Yeah, man. That's exactly right. So once again, you can do it the God-ordained way and pray about it and hear him say, not that one. Or you can say, but I like that one. That's the one I want. And now when I'm saying this, I'm, use, I'm, not, I'm using a car as an example, but you can apply it. Listen, it's applicable to anything in your life. Let me say that. I'm not just, okay, I'm not just talking about cars. These are analogies. I'm giving you symbolism for things in your life. You could have took two or three days and it saved you a whole year of your life. But once again, if you want it, he'll let you have it. Amen. And that was heartache and it was hard and God did deliver. But I had to do a lot of repenting and I had to do a whole lot of working. Amen. A whole, whole lot. There was also different ungodly relationships of the past. This is when I wasn't walking close to the Lord. I had no clue who Miss Kimberly was. And I was not close to God. Listen, I was his, but if I'd have been arrested for being a Christian, there wouldn't have been enough evidence to convict me. <laughs> We're hauling you in. You have the right to mean silence. Get in front of the judge. Well, as we can see here, I'm sorry, but we're throwing out your case. We don't believe you're a Christian at all. <laughs> case dismissed. And so it happened with godly, ungodly relationships. I never checked in with God. I always went on my flavor of the week or what attributes I would like. I never, because listen, when you, when you marry somebody, you marry them. You don't marry their looks. You don't marry how they cook. You don't, you don't marry any of that stuff. You marry them. Who cares what it might be like in bed? You ain't going to stay in bed 24-7. You marry them. And attributes are okay for a while, but you know why most people even split up anyway? Because they finally, after a memory like I tell you guys, when you first start dating somebody, you're not dating them, they're date, you're dating the representative. And, and just like, a, you, go, you can go back to a car, even like a new car. Oh, I love that new car smell. Well, after about a year, the smell's gone, but that payment book's still this high. And all of a sudden, it's just not as thrilly anymore. And we do the same thing with people. It's one thing with things, but it's another thing with people. And all of a sudden, over time, you start realizing who they are. And you realize, you know, it doesn't matter if, if he can do this or if he's great at that. After about a year of, of some of that nonsense, you're like, mm -mm, I'm gone. I'm out of here. I ain't going to put up with that. 
Sometimes you'll try to hold on. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I ain't changing for you. You know who I was when we first started getting together. This is who I am. And if you don't have enough sense, you're going to be even more heartbroken the more time goes on. And that's what happens. Is that instead of asking God, God, who are they? You can have lots of friends. You can go out and date a whole lot. A lot of date, date a lot of different people too. And you'll know when the one comes around. Because once again, there'll be that witness. Because you've already been fasting and praying. See, I, when I finally got myself together and started to do it God's way, I prayed for my wife before I knew her name was Kimberly. Amen. Amen. But if you don't do it God's way, you'll end up with, uh, I had a, a stalker in the past. Out when I played music and I was in bands and everything. I had somebody to come around. I actually uh, gave a little bit of time to and a little bit of interest to, but that was it. And all of a sudden, before I realized it, I was being stalked. Oh, they seem sweet and nice. They wouldn't hurt a fly. Until every time you look out your window, you see somebody sitting in a parked car staring back at you. That's, that's beyond uncomfortable. That's beyond weird. You, they crazy. They crazy. Cray cray. I've had some in my past also that I dated for quite a long time. Once again, these are people I never asked God about. I never asked God about anything in this time of my life. Amen. Anything. Had one that got pregnant by another man. And it would have been nice at first if she'd have told me up front. But it was, oh, I'm pregnant and I don't want to see you no more. Had to find out later from secondhand sources that they went in and did the DNA test and it was officially somebody. Didn't check in with God. Wanted to do things my way. And then I had another one that I didn't check in with God and it seemed to be okay at first. And it seemed that everything was going all right. But the only thing is, once again, I didn't check with God. And I got heartbroken. I mean, heartbroken, broken. Once again, I was not clinging close to God. I mean, it was a point in time, literally. I mean, I'm not, not exaggerating. I'm a little bit thin on top right now because of what happened. I was in so much stress and distress and discouragement and, and hopelessness and tears. Some hair started coming out. Got so malnourished, just started withering away. Absolutely heartbroken. Couldn't hardly do nothing. Night and day. Started picking up drinking. All because I didn't check in with God. And I just decided to get on this ride. Strap myself in. Well, this seems okay. All right. Well, <laughs> let's hit her. Pedal to the metal, baby. Live hard. Die free. Woo! <laughs> It says sin is pleasurable for a season. Why did you say it that way? Because the Bible said, he says that him that knows to do good and does not, it is a sin. It also said what's not done in faith is, and we know the wages of sin is, so it's going to bite you in the end. I don't care how good it looks, how good it feels or anything else. It will get you in the end. But if you would just spend time with God, just pray and fast and ask him about things. In other words, do things the easy way, according to his word. But you can learn the hard way. I had to learn the hard way through all that stuff. Also, I had to learn the hard way of the circle of friends. I can remember one night getting so, so drunk, I just thought, wonder, I wonder. Now, once again, I wasn't over 200 pounds at this time in my life. There was a time in my life where I really hit the gym, and that's a whole message from a whole other day. Yes, you can transform your life. If you do it diligently enough and hard enough, long enough, amen. But I was, I don't know, I was maybe about 150, 55 pounds or something like that back then in the day. I was a broomstick with hair on it. And I can remember, I wonder what it would be like if I could drink this Jack Daniels pint and just guzzle it down. And sure enough, I thought that was funny. I wonder if I could do that or not. 
Well, and of course, my friends thought it would be funny too. And so I did it. It was gone in under 10 minutes. I mean, it was gone. And so here I'm hanging out with these friends, and I'm so drunk, I can't even, I don't even know if I'm alive. I don't know. I remember one of my friends saying, let's go inside a riot. And so I'm in the back of this car, because I can't even get out of the car. So I'm in the back of the car, and I hear, let's inside a riot. And about 15 minutes later, I see blue lights flashing everywhere, sirens coming from all different directions. And luckily, I was so drunk in the back of the car that the police left me alone. They didn't even know I was there because I never got out of the car yet. And my friends decided to dump me off at our practice pad. Y'all, I woke up the next morning. My tongue was, uh, was blacker than a chow. If you ever know what a chow chow dog is, my tongue was black. I had alcohol poisoning to the max. I could have died. And I just got threw off. They didn't know what to do with me. Friends. It's amazing how you get older and you, you know what a real friend, because a real friend will tell you the truth, whether you want to hear it or not. Amen. Amen. And so I didn't want to check in the guy with my friends. I had to learn the hard way. I almost died because of it. But the Lord knew I needed to talk to you guys about that. So that's why I'm alive, right? And in most cases, horrendous choices and decisions, listen, are byproducts of either no godly counsel or refusal to heed godly counsel. The biggest flunders, blunders, bloops, and blippers in your life, the lowest points when you are dumped on, It's because you either didn't have or didn't heed godly counsel. Because God's still going to step in the middle of it as you're going in that direction. And say, hold on, wait. And if you want to, you can just keep going right on by. And he'll let you. Because once again, if you want it bad enough, he'll let you have it. Did you check in with him? But even if you find yourself right in the middle of this self-induced drama called your life. The good news is, is that God can use your hardship to add fuel to your fire and further your future. You don't have to go through it. Some people be like, well, what I went through made me. That's true, but you didn't have to go through it. Because every person I ever read about in Scripture that did what God told them to do didn't have to go through it. The ones that went through it are the ones that didn't do what God told them to do. And then all of a sudden, once again, oh, God, save me, help me. Amen. It's called delayed gratification. Not wanting your things. Right. Listen, he's the king of kings, not the burger kings. You don't have it your way right away. Amen. Sometimes he'll make you wait 25 years for that promised child. Ask Abraham. Sometimes he'll naunt your head with oil and say, you're going to be king. But it might take 13 years before that crown hits your head. Ask David. Sometimes it may take a few years before you see the barn packed out. Let's go to Isaiah 48 so I can meddle with you a little bit more. Because remember, remember what I said on the front end, God will use it, but He will not send it. God will use your utter failures and, and the times that people hurt you and did things to you. He can use that, but listen, that's not His first choice. He will use it, but He doesn't send it. But He will use it. Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48 says, Behold, I have refined thee. 
But not with silver, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For those who don't know what refining is, it's when you put a precious metal and you put it in extreme heat. And what happens in that extreme heat is that all the impurities will rise to the surface. And the goldsmith will go along, and that's what they call the dross. He'll take, very careful, because he don't want to get any of the gold up, he'll take and get all the impurities out. And then he'll wait a while until more impurities will come out. And then wait a while until more impurities come out. And then he knows that it's pure when he can lean over it. Check this out, you're going to like this. And he can see his reflection in it. I'm telling you what, if I was speaking in front of 2,000 people at a conference, there wouldn't be a single person sitting in their seats right now. Hallelujah! Because when he can see himself, he, hey, he knows that you're living your life according to the Word. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm not talking about the Spirit, man. He is joined to Christ as one Spirit. You, if you're born again, your Spirit is complete just like Him. Amen. I said it because the Bible said it. I'm just repeating the Word of God. Your spirit's the same right now as it's going to be 10 billion years from now. But on this earth and this lifestyle, this life that we're living, refining. And if you don't want to listen to Him, then He'll let you go through the fire. He'll let you go through the heat. But once again, the whole purpose is to Get you more in the image of Christ. And he'll just take those impurities a little at a time. Because he knows that there's a treasure in you. Because you're his. Amen. And he'll put you under the heat until that purity remains. He'll allow it to happen. How about Zechariah 13, 9? Let's try that one on. Let's see if it fits. Zechariah 13. If you go to Matthew, just go back two books and you'll get there, okay? Just go to the left. Go to Matthew and then go to left. Zechariah 13, 9. He says, And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. And I will try them or test them as gold is tried. And they shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. So even through your mess, he might not bless the mess, but he will bring you out of that mess to clean you up, to refine you, let you go through some heat in your life. Some people say, well, you know, God let that happen, so you'd finally hit your knees. No. That's not accurate. It took all that for you to finally hit your knees, but you didn't have to go through all that to do it. You could have done it two years ago. Amen. You could have done it two years ago. But he will not send it, but he will use it. He'll let, he'll, he will use the heat. Malachi 3.3. 3. Just go to the right just a little bit and you'll hit Malachi. Malachi 3, 3. Oh, it can get good. Let me go to verse 1. I'll try not to preach all of it. Hence the word try. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant. Whew, I like that. Whom ye delight in, because behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide but who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth for he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap he's going to clean some stuff up hallelujah Amen. like a refiner's fire verse 3 
And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So many times he used the prophets and he told Moses already, this is how I want it done. They didn't have to go through the go-through, just like we don't have to go through the go-through. But when he comes, he may come if you won't listen to anything he says and you cry out for help. Oh, help me, God. He will come, but he will come as a refiner's fire and let you go through that heat to pur purify you. That's not his first choice. He lets you do your first choice. And it didn't work out. never does. But that's Old Covenant. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Don't even get me started on people who don't want to go into the Old Testament. That's all Peter, James, John, Andrew, and all of them. That's all they had. They just went around preaching. What do you think they preached? Well, they preached Jesus. Well, why did they preach Jesus from? They didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans, 1 and 2 Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 and 2 Peter, 1 and 2 and 3 John, Jude, and Revelation. They didn't have it. What did they have? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, number. Well, why was it, well, where was Jesus in that? Exactly. They proclaimed the new covenant by going into what is already written. Because what back then was concealed, the New Testament is revealed. It's just a revealing of what was. It's not, oh, well, well, I'm about to tune up. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 3.11 For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Christ Jesus. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. What's that all about? We're getting ready to find out. Every man's work. Did you hear that? I'm just saying, oh, see, I ain't got time. I could hit this, but I'd have to explain it, and I can't do that to you. I just can't throw a piece of meat out there and not even put it on the grill for you. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Why is the fire going to be hitting on all that stuff? Because the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. God cares about quality, not quantity. Amen. Did you hear me? He cares... I don't care if it looks like somebody has been extremely successful in an area in their life. You don't know whether that's gold, uh, silver, gold, precious stones, or wood, hay, and stubble. God's going to test what sort it is. What does that mean? What have we been talking about? The, the heart. Who did, did you do it for? For his glory or for yours? You can even be standing in a pulpit holding a mic speaking to a few thousand people and it still not be silver, gold, or precious stones. Amen. I'm not here to shoot our wounded. Everybody's got situations. Look, everybody's going to trip up and miss it. But how many times in the last so ever so many years have you heard of some leader in the faith, all of a sudden something happened, you're like, what? Well, he's been doing that. He's been a man of God for how many years? Built that church up to what? And he got busted doing what? Quality. Because as we're looking at this, that, and the other, he's looking at whether it's gold, silver, precious stones, or whether it's wood, hay, or stubble. Did you build your own kingdom? 
and just threw God's name in there every now and then. Oh, I feel like bucking. Somebody from the old church knows what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Even in your life, in the vocation that God has got you, or the people that He's got you around, your inner circle, what sort of it? What sort of it is it? What's the motive? There's nothing wrong with hanging around certain people to learn and grow. It's another thing to hang around people to become a leech. I say it, you know, I heard this bishop say this too, that, you know, if you're the smartest person in your group, you need another to get a new group. But it's for the learning and growing. Why? So you will be able to help people in the calling that God gave you. To help further you because you're the best gift you could ever give anybody. But what do they get when they get you? What's your bottom line? What's the motive of your heart? Read on. Verse 14, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, burned, he shall receive, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Because you're not saved by your works. Amen. Amen. You're saved by His grace through faith. Amen. But there's a day coming when all the people will stand before Christ and it's all going to, everything that you've done is going to be put to the fire. And it's either going to be pure, it's either going to be gold, silver, and precious stones which will remain. Or what would happen if you put wood, hay, and stubble in front of a big fire? I mean, you think that, you know, you think you've seen fires. You ain't seen no fire like His fire. What do you think would happen to wood, hay, and stubble when it hits the fire? What happens? Wouldn't it be sad? Don't you think there's going to be a lot of people standing there that's going to be crying? Remember he said he's going to wipe away every tear? I think that's going to be one of the things that he's going to have to wipe tears around. I spent my whole life for that and it's just... Boo. And the Lord's going to take you back because he, he knows the hearts. He's the revealer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And he's going to take, it, take you through back and see how you did everything for you, not for him. Don't you make fun of old Aunt Minnie only living in a 1,100 square foot house all her life. And now you living in some 3,500 square foot house, five acres of land and got this and that going on thinking you leaving a legacy. And you get up to heaven and you realize that everything she all did in her life, hallelujah, his was gold, silver, and precious stone. And she got a pile over there and you ain't left nothing but ashes. Oh, this is hard, but this is so good. Oh, I'm not going to let you make them mistakes on my watch. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 2. My time is going down now, but I have my clock in front of me. Second Timothy 2. Uh, I'm starting with verse 14. Uh, help me not to preach this whole thing either, Lord. Second Timothy 2.14. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord. This is Paul speaking to Timothy saying, this is what you got to do when you're going to be a pastor. A lot of times we don't ruffle feathers and we try to handle people with soft gloves. You ought to hear some of the language that Paul tells Timothy in here about how to handle the church. Amen. So, that's what I'm saying, that even if Timothy's, Timothy's, if Timothy was, if Timothy was around 2018, he would not be a seeker friendly church. And the people be talking a lot about Timothy. But yet he would be doing exactly what the Holy Ghost said. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Don't get tangled up in crazy stuff that ain't going to make a difference. And just getting fights and quarrels. The Lord is against it. He hates division among the brethren. Study to show thyself approved. That word study is interesting. It doesn't just mean academically get it right. It means to be in action. Be ready. Be diligent. Be diligent to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Listen, rightly dividing the word of truth. You're not going to rightly divide if you don't study to show. That's 
But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more unrighteousness. Pastor, you think God created Bigfoot? Pastor, thank you for taking the time with me today. Well, I'm, we're here to help you. But I do have some questions. All right, go ahead. Does the Bible say anything about UFOs? See, you think I'm kidding, but we've been there. Life is a wreck. A lot of dysfunction going on. Need to make a big time adjustments. And that's what you want to lead in with? Lord Jesus. And since we were not, listen, since we were not too interested, listen, we didn't devalue that person. We didn't make them feel like they were stupid. But since we definitely went in another direction, they never come back around for more counseling. And they were evicted from their home. Mm. And there's a divorce in their family. And now four kids are... Mm. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase into more ungodliness. And their word will eat as does a canker or a cancer, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. If you go around and just have babblings and this and that and the other, you're not rightly dividing the word, you can overthrow the faith of some people. How dare somebody go in into a hospital room when you're uh, fighting for, for life and say, Brother, you just need to go ahead and just get, your li get it in order. Just get your life in order. You can overthrow the faith of some. Well, you'll never be anything. Maybe the way they are now, but they've got an advocate. Where was I even at? I'm about to get off track here. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are His. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Depart from it. If you're going to name the name of Christ, depart from it. Oh, I could go off in a different direction on that too about living a holy life. There's much to say about that. But in a great house there are not only vessels, listen, here we go, of gold and of silver, but there's also of wood and of earth, some to honor the gold and silver and some to dishonor. Amen. If a man therefore purge himself, purge, prune, take away, Sounds a whole lot like a refiner's fire, doesn't it? Trying to get the impurities up so they can come out. Get them up so we can take them out. I see it up plenty of times at the altar in a real powerful worship service sometimes. All this stuff, all this that's been going on in their life for years will come up. <laughs> why are they so upset? Because it's finally coming up. Well, why is it coming up? So God can take it out. Amen. That was good. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet or qualified for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Well, what if you don't want to purge yourself from those things? Well, then you won't be a vessel of honor. You'll still be in the house, but you won't be silver or gold. You'll be wood and earth. And you won't be sanctified, which means set apart and qualified for the master's use. Well, I wish God would use me. He'll use you when you become usable. Now, he's never had anybody qualified to work for him yet. Amen. But the more you know, the more you'll grow. And the more you grow, the more it'll show. And the more the Lord will be able to use you in the capacities that he's already put down in your heart. Because he will use you once you become more usable. Even like talking to some young ministers that want to be in the ministry. I said, God will use you. You'll get used. You'll get used. Amen, amen, amen. About five years later, talking about this person stabbed him in the back. This person left. This person wouldn't even say nothing. This person was saying false doctrine. This person was hating on him. 
He's like, what's going on? I said, well, you want it to be used. You're getting used quite a bit, aren't you? <laughs> Amen. John, 5, John 15, 2. Let's see if Jesus knows a little bit about this. Because you can do it the easy way, which is God ordained, or you can go the hard way. You can do it your own way and have to go through the fire. Have to go through the testing. You can either be silver and gold and precious stones or wood, hay, and stubble for what you do. And in John 15, 2, it says, For every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. I got red letters here. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, purges. He's going to cut on you. Why? That it may bring forth more fruit. You're pruned if you do, and you're pruned if you don't. God loves you too much to leave you. Well, He accepts, accepts me how I am. No, He accepts you despite of how you are. He's trying to conform you into the image of His Son, and He will prune you. And if you will not listen to His Word, He will allow these things to come in, and you will get cut on. You will get cut on, or you will go through the fire. That was my alarm. Let's go to Luke 13. I've got to finish these scriptures, because I want you to get the Word of God, not my opinion. Luke 13, 6. We went over this in another series late last year, but it, it's very appropriate. 13, 6. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and it came, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Mm. Then, he, then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why encumbereth it the ground? God's serious about bearing fruit. Verse 8, And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also. Mercy. 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 Let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. Fertilizing it. Throwing all this crap on it. Because it ain't doing nothing for these three years, so I'm going to let a little bit of dung hit it. And to dig around it, what that means, if you'll go back and, and use agricultural terms, you actually go around that tree and you'll actually go into part of the root and sever part of the root. What that does is it, that, that, uh, it causes it to react. Um, help me, Holy Spirit. It, it, it rattles it. It shakes it up. What's the word I'm looking for? Oh, uh, help me, Holy Spirit. It's like a shock. It shocks it. Thank you. It's a shock effect. It shocks the tree. The tree has been stagnant, hadn't been doing nothing. All of a sudden, it cuts off the roots. It's a shock effect. That tree's like, whoa, what's going on? Hey, all of a sudden, it's a tension. You've shocked it into thinking, oh, I got to do something. What's going on over here? I don't know. I got less of me. Oh, well, what let's do? And all of a sudden, it starts producing again. You don't have to be dunged about. You don't have to let the Lord be in a position that you have some stuff cut off in your life to shock you into realizing that you need... You don't have to go through that. But He will use it. He will use it. He will use the pruning. He will use the shock effect. He will use the refiner's fire. He doesn't send it. You could done it His way right away. And then every day, you'd be okay. <laughs> How about Luke 15? Let's go over there real quick. I got to get these. I got to get these. The parable of the lost, uh, the lost son or the, the prodigal son. 
Notice that the father was there to greet him when he come back, but the father was not at the door begging him to stay. I don't hear that preached very often. If you want to go out there and spend all you got, you want to run with her, <laughs> let her take all your money, be broke, busted, and disgusted in a land that you ain't got no friends, and you want to be in a pig pen, have at it. I'll let you do it. I'll let you wallow in the pig pen all day long if that's what you want to do. But as soon as he came to himself, in other words, as soon as that shovel went to the roots and cut off that root shock effect, he came to himself. What am I doing here? Exactly. You never should have been there to begin with, but at least you realize that, you should, that there's a way back. Go home. Then the father will run to you as you're coming back, but he is not going to chase you down when you leave him. Amen. Ah, James chapter 1. Gosh, I was hoping I wouldn't go over today, and here I am going over my time again. Thank you for being patient, but I've got to give you the word on this. And I'm too far into it to just say, come back next week. Too far into it. I want you to have understanding. James chapter 1, verse 2, says, My brethren, count it joy. Oh, Boy, joy, what, are we going to a party? Are we having a feast, one of the love feasts it talks about in Scripture? What, are we going to be joyful about? Count it all joy when you fall into various temptations. Uh-oh. Meaning adversities. Count it joy when you fall into various adversities. you got to be kidding me. Joy, adversities? That's like an oxymoron, isn't it? I mean, that's like... Am I reading the Word of God? Yes. Hallelujah. Count it joy when you fall into these adversities, knowing this, that the trying or the testing of your what? Faith. Will work patience. Conf uh, cheerful endurance. But let cheerful endurance, patience, have her complete and mature work. Because if you'll let yourself go through the go through it says that you may be complete and entire wanting lacking nothing <laughs> amen everybody wants to lack nothing but nobody wants to go through various adversities i got to move on romans 5 Romans 5, verses 3 and 4. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Mm. Do what? Did I read that just right? You sure do. Knowing that tribulation, listen, I don't like how some of the newer translations have this. I, I like the King James on this. How tribulation works patience or works cheerful endurance. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of translations say it produces. No, because if, if all tribulation produces it, I could go downtown <laughs> to all the homeless, and they should be spiritual giants right now. You hear what I'm saying? Or go to any kind of alcohol rehabilitation, drug rehabilitation place for people just coming in, hearing their sort stories, and say, man, you must be a spiritual giant because tribulation produces patience. I bet you're full of it. Well, they are full of it, but not patience, probably. Amen? But God's going to get a hold of them. It works. It will work it if you allow it. Or you can sit down and molly grub and, and grumble. See, the whole time you're, you're getting pruned. You're, you're, you're getting dug around. You're getting through the fire. <laughs> but it will work cheerful endurance. And cheerful endurance will work experience. In other words, you've been through it a few times. It don't bother you like it used to because you know when he says that we are going to the other side, you will get there. And that experience will work hope, which is confident expectation. Because he's told you we're going to the other side so many times that now you've, you've had that experience and now you have confident expectations. What you going to do? What do you mean, what am I going to do? I'm going to believe God. Yeah, but you got all this going on in your life. Man, you don't understand. You sure do sound confident. I know I'm confident because he's took me through this. He's took me through that. 
and he faileth not. 1 Peter 1, 6. Are you seeing a theme here? First Peter 1 Peter 1.6 says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a what? For a what? For a season. So this stuff ain't going to always, if you'll let it work, like we just read, if you'll work it, let it work in you, it will be for a season. See, see, people fall apart like a $2 suitcase thinking this is how their life is going to be. No, this is how this season is going to be. Though now for a season, listen, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Let me see if the rendering of that is... Give me just a second. Because I know there was one that was a little different than the other one. Your heaviness through manifold adversities. Yes. I just want to make sure I was getting it right. Though through Many different adversities. Verse 7. Why? That the trial or the testing of your, your faith. Being much more precious than of gold that perishes. Though it be what? Tried with fire. The easy way of doing everything is following God's word to a T. But we're all not perfect. I'm not. So I'm going to miss it some cases. I'm not going to listen to godly counsel. So there's some things in my life I've got to go through the fire to get purified. Why? Because my faith is more precious. Though it get tried. Well, it don't look like what you said. But what did he say? Well, he said this. Well, it don't look like that either. Well, it's going to. But for a season, if need be. Though it's tried with fire, might be found under the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The school of hard knocks is not God's first choice. But even then, all things can work together for good. Amen. Amen. But there's conditions on that too. We use that scripture just so lucidly. Can I be honest with you? A lot of times the people that use those scriptures, you go back a few years later and they still ain't no better off. Let's, can we just be honest about it? Because a lot of people will pull a lot of things out of context and not get the full meaning of what it's really saying. So basically they're not doing it right. Things will work out according to good for those who, who number one, this is Romans 8.28, number one, for those who love God. <laughs> Shut it down. Two minutes. Give me two minutes. How do you know if you love God? It's not because you say it. Jesus said, he says, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I tell you to do? The Word of God tells, tells us, if you love me, you will keep my command. So things are, all things will work out together for good for those who truly do love God. In other words, those that are following His commandments and doing what He says because He's Lord. Thank you for, my, for being my Savior. Man, you ain't going to be my Lord. Thank you for saving me from a devil's hell. But if I want to go do this, I'll do this. Things are not going to work. Why? Because once again, because if you don't, coming back full circle, you've just created a mess. And he's not going to bless that mess. So things are not all going to work out together for good. Because if you really loved him, you'd keep his commandments. And if you've missed it big time, he said, confess your sins. And he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Just repent. Turn around. 
I don't care if you do have keys to her house. Give them back to her and walk the other way. I sleep here, you sleep there. Put a ring on it. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I just, you know, just take a drink every now and then. Ain't no bad. Play around with it. He'll let you have it. Love God. And number two, all things will work together for good if you love God and two, are operating according to His purpose. And I've got to shut it down on this one. I can't go any further. God has told you to be a carpenter, but yet you're trying to be a plumber every day of your life and you're wondering why your plumbing business won't work. Are you called according to His purpose? So you've got to love him and keep his commandments. Look, he knows, listen, why do you think those scriptures are in there that if we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father? Because he knows you ain't going to get it right every time. <laughs> He'll get you your turnaround, but you've got to turn around. That's what repentance means. You've got to turn around to get your turnaround. Oh, that was good. You, you have to. See, God's not going to come down and take you and spin you like a top. You have got to turn around in order to get your turnaround. Lord, how mercy that was good. You have got to turn around to get your turnaround. But when you do that and you follow his calling according to his purpose. Yeah, but I went to school for three years for this. And my family's got X amount of dollars invested in it. And I still ain't got my student loans paid off. What does that got? To do with the call of God on your life has nothing to do with it. Play the music, baby. I gotta quit. Not finished, but I gotta quit. What's that got to do with it when you know that that's what He wants you to do? Well, all things work out for, together for good. No, they won't if you're not following His purpose for your life and you don't love Him. Because if you don't love him, you won't keep his commandments and he won't bless your mess. And it won't if you're not uh, going according to his calling because he's got all your blessings over there, but yet you still keep running to over here. See, it's already there. You ain't waiting on it. It's waiting on you to get there because it's already there. But you keep wanting to go here. 